this week, episode 305 of Stogie Geeks. I am at the Havana Republic Cigar Company in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on a little vacation. And Drew is ironically on the road uh, over in Texas. We're going to talk a little bit about our sticks of the week. We're going to talk a little bit about what it's like here in South Florida for cigars. And Nick Jonas appears on the cover of Cigar Aficionado magazine. And I think that it's record breaking. So you want to stay tuned. And it all starts right now on episode 305 of Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 305. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. I am live from Havana Republic Cigars. I'm going to give you the address. It is 610 East Los Alas Boulevard over in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I want to say a special thanks to Juan Ruiz and his family. Uh, They are always great guests whenever I'm in town and they extend the red carpet for sure. After this episode, we're doing a little lunch and hanging around the Strip. It's such a fun place to be. If you are ever in Fort Lauderdale, you definitely got to check this place out. Awesome humidor, awesome humidor selection. They have a wine rack on the wall. You know I like that. And um, they have live entertainment on Friday and Saturday nights. You can come check them out on the Strip or like them on Instagram, Facebook, and follow me. I will post links. Uh, when I get back into town on Monday, stogiegeeks.com forward slash 305. And of course, I am joined by Drew, who is also on the road. Drew, how's it going? Good, Joe. Uh, out here in East Texas, traveling on the roads, uh, getting some work in. Uh, got some training stuff going on, enjoying the weather. Uh, looks like we're going to be expecting a little rain out here, but uh, uh, doing that, uh, enjoying all the Cowboy fans. Talking about going to the Super Bowl already, so hey, uh, we, here we go. I, I, that's so with, awesome that you are <laughs> at the stadium on a weekly basis, and yeah. we're going to be able to get our Cowboy updates for sure. I'm, I'm sure the oh, two most hated teams in the NFL are co- what Cowboys and Patriots. So I guess we, Cowboys yeah, and Patriots. I guess all the Stogie Geeks listeners are in good company. Drew, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. This is funny, as you know. And, and all the Story Geeks listeners know, all of my Story Geeks episodes are not scripted, right? Um, the only ones I really prepare for are the ones that Paul are on, and those are sporadic. And the, the last time he was on, uh, I didn't know he was coming on until the second episode. So, um, Drew, do you know the last time I was here, um, I actually interviewed uh, someone in a vehicle like yourself, which I think right. is so awesome. Like, <laughs> I think that's so cool that you're on the road and, and I know that you're, you're in different time zones and you're making this happen. So I just, I definitely want to thank you for your time and, 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 and uh, appreciate that. Uh, before we get into our sticks of the week, I, I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about, I really didn't want to do a segment on this, but right. I think that this really needs to be highlighted. Okay. So I am reading from the Cigar Aficionado website but, and, and, and it says, For the first post, uh, I'm sorry, let me start with this. Nick Jonas' cover scores more than a million likes within the first 
24 hours of, of Cigar Aficionado magazine. Now, as you know, being on Store Your Geeks with the podcast and all of that stuff, what happens is, you know, we, we, when it comes to sponsorship and everything, everybody's trying to get into Cigar Aficionado. I get it, right? They mm-hmm. have the, the, their spot, uh, and it's a very big spot. And But this has to be worth talking about just highlighting because – um, the first post went up about 11 a.m. on Monday, and then the second post was just after lunch. In, in less than 24 hours, they had over a combined million likes over on Instagram. And it's basically Nick Jonas is on the cover of Cigar Aficionado for the September-October issue. And, yeah. you know, I kind of think that this is interesting, right? Because even on Jonas's page, it got like 1.3 million i'm sorry 1.23 million times as well oh. and in the 27 year history of the magazine no cover has drawn such social media attention now let's highlight this nick jonas turns 27 years old next week he's the youngest person to ever be on the cover of the magazine and this magazine debuted in the fall of 1992 other stars mm that were or actors that have been on there that have reached i guess what they're saying legendary status was robert de niro jack nicholson arnold schwarzenegger and michael jordan the oh, yeah. basketball player and so you know what, what i think is pretty neat is that you know he's 27 years old he's young he's the face of the cover what are your thoughts on this because when this first came out i really had mixed feelings which if you follow me over on Twitter or if you follow me mm-hmm. on Facebook, I'm Joe Hozempa, J-O-E-H-O-Z-E-M-P-A on Twitter. Um, um, Joe, uh, Joe Hozempa on Facebook there. And, and it's like, you know, I kind of had mixed feelings about this. And then as my week progressed, I'm thinking a couple of things. But, but I want to get your thoughts on this first, Drew. Yeah, you know, for that to happen the way it did happen uh, – the way it was rolled out. I mean, it was uh, for us in the cigar industry. I, I feel that that was a win-win situation all the way around. I mean, uh, one, I mean, he's, he's definitely got the, the, the followers and, 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 and fans and things of that nature there. Uh, and uh, you know, I mean, it was a nice photo, you know, of him on the cover um, with all his uh, followers uh, it just broadens, and it lets it lets you know, uh, for those who don't un, who don't smoke cigars, that you know you don't have to, you know, it, it, they come from all walks of life. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of celebrities and a lot of uh, people are the only ones that really get on these magazines, but it, it just gives us a very large, diverse field of exposure, and it lets you know that you know. Uh, for me, anyways, it, le- it lets me know that there's more to this uh, cigar industry than just, uh, you know, people who who want to downplay it or and things of that nature. So that in my in, in my idea, that's 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 the way I perceived it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I first looked my, at it like yeah. like like, I don't know, like I pictured Jonas, obviously what he was first known for. He was in a boy band, and I was like, why are they doing that? But then I started to, to, to kind of, like, let it sit in, right, uh, within, the, with, 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 within my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm very scatterbrained for sure. And I'm like, wow, like, I thought it was well mm-hmm. played. But um, they're saying that, you know, it was the most successful cover since the birth of social media. So my take is this, mm-hmm. right? If social media was alive and well, like it really was, say, in the early 90s, when Michael Jordan or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Robert De Niro was 90s. there, I, right? I wonder if they would still get a million likes. I would venture to say yes. Like, I would venture I to say I... when, when, when you're looking at that. Now, also, uh, growing up from a cigar pre-Stogie geek, right, I was never – kind of like intrigued of like ooh this person's on the cover of the magazine i right. was always like wow i wonder what they smoke <laughs> you know what right. i mean like yeah. you know I, I you know like like I, I don't know and i guess that really means why hey you know i'm i'm a true stogie geek right you know so it's right. like 
you know, it's like, wow, okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger is on the cover of the magazine. Okay, great, that's awesome. But like, what does he smoke? Like, you know, is he out there? Is he is he rocking? You know, thirty dollar Gurkhas or Davidoffs, or yeah. is he is he into the boutique thing now? Because it it kind of you know that is where you know a lot of the boutiques are kind of getting in on the shelf space. I wonder what he likes, and 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 I I I, I hope that cigar aficionado dives into that like a little bit more as opposed to what they've always kind of talked about in my opinion was like the lifestyle and i know that cigar right. Fishnado is a style magazine but like if you're a stogie geek i mean wouldn't you want to be more more intrigued as like you know because you know think like 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 do they order online do they go to a shop do they get delivered i don't know the the their consumer behavior yeah. is more appealing to me than their star yes. appeal yeah, and you know what? And and we could put that out there. I mean, we we should ask his fans to ask him. Hey, what are you smoking? What are you enjoying about that smoking? Just, I mean, not not really a review, but but just to get that intrigue out of there, uh, out there, to us who do you know who who are a little bit more seasoned in that area, but uh, for his followers as well. I mean, I'm not saying that you need to tell people to go smoke cigars, but talk about why you know what it is you enjoy about that time uh i know some of these celebrities that i do know and i'm not going to name drop uh and uh you know i'll they'll they'll be you know they'll, i'll ask them you know hey what are you smoking and then they'll tell me and they'll tell me why they got to that cigar they'll explain to me you know what they like about it and surprisingly they don't always go to that higher echelon of cigar um sure. You know, uh, 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 you know, in in the humidor, they, uh, they're just things that other friends of theirs have smoked and enjoyed, and so therefore they go ahead and and go that route. Uh, and then a, quite a few of them have always have always told me it's 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 kind of like uh, you know a kid in the candy store when you were a kid you used to walk in and you see the Zabba Dabbas, the Rocky Roads, the Snickers, you know. But now as an adult, you're looking at all this cigar candy in front of you you're like oh man you know you they'll gravitate towards the rapper uh myself like when i started it was the bands i love the bands i love the artwork yep. uh but yeah they'll they'll go into those general uh uh areas you know when they walk into a humidor it's pretty cool right right that's awesome that's awesome um drew if it's possible could you just lower your mic just a scotch that's all. If you can't, it's no worries. They'll, they'll fix it on the audio end. Yeah, I bet you maybe okay. you and I are just looking way too deep into this, and maybe they're just like us, and their cigar tastes are all over the map, and they just love cigars, and they love the lifestyle, and, ju and just leave it at that, you know? <laughs> you know, but I right. wanted to just take exactly. a moment. I just, I just wanted for us to kind of take a moment and kind of reflect on that, because like over a million views. I mean, I, I and and you know, I'm yeah. not thinking that like by all means, like Nick Jonas is going to be the face of the industry at all. But yeah, I yeah. I also think that you know them getting you know, and 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 he's also doing a uh, solo because the Jonas Brothers are done now, and he's also mm -hmm. doing his own acting thing, and he's he's uh, he's out on his own, and ironically, he's on the cover, um, just before he's kicking off his tour in a couple of months. Or a couple of weeks, yeah. so I'm not a. I don't really follow, but 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 that's what the article read. So, so Stogie Geeks, right. if you want to, you want to email me at Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, I will forward all the emails. I will respond to you, and I will reply with Drew, and we can get the conversation going, and we can keep it going um, there. Or you can hit me up over on Twitter or or, or Drew on Facebook and whatnot, um, and and let let us know your thoughts on this. Like I said, maybe we might be looking too deep into it. Maybe, um, you know, I, I, you know, maybe a million views is common. I would like to see some of the other threads. I would venture to say that no matter what Scott Fishnado posts, they're probably close to a million likes anyway. And if they right. were to do like, like Michael Jordan now, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm quite sure, or especially Robert De Niro, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that they would get that, that many likes as well. But the fact that it was in 24 hours, um, I right. think it's, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's just worth noting that social media is a huge presence 
and it's here to stay in the dynamics of the cigar smoker uh, is 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 changing i mean but then again if jonas likes to hang out in a cigar lounge and sip his wine or whatever it is that he drinks and all of that stuff hey man well welcome to the potty pal that's all i gotta say it's a good time you know it's just a good time sitting around smoking oh, yeah. cigars and oh. meeting friends. Oh, yeah. so there you have it so that's my take exactly. on it if, yeah. like i said for you listeners if you want to get in on that you can just flash me an email and we will have that conversation going and i'll if we get enough activity on that, I will read your comments in the next episode and, and spend spend a little more time on that re- reflection. And if not, then we'll do some more interviews and move on. It's all good, right? So, Drew, what have you there been smoking? Go. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to start it off. I'm going to kick it off with this, uh, the AJ uh, Fernandez, uh, the Hoya de Monterey Dark Sumatra. Uh, mm. I guess I missed the first boat when it came out, uh, but then on in in the uh, IPCPR show, um, it as uh, it was uh, La Amistad. Uh, so I'm uh, from what I read uh, at Halfway on some of the other uh, online uh, uh, information. Um, apparently, they have their own place now in Estelle. so uh, mm-hmm. they rebranded a little bit. Uh, same tobacco, same. Uh, everything's the same. It's just that it got, it got rebranded, uh, and it's now being done by some Tosaderos over at, uh, in, in Estelle. Um, uh, I chose the, uh, the Noche, uh, which is a six and a half by 52. I'm sorry. I'm looking down. I'm reading my notes. Uh, it's all good. My teleprompter is at home. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, with that, um, uh, good cigar, good burn, uh, man. I, I'm enjoying it. Matter of fact, I'm I'm smoking another one right now, and I just smoked one last Saturday, and I must say, uh, this is definitely one of the cigars that I I, I truly recommend uh, uh, for a a novice. You know, a big uh, uh, you know, get something to eat, of course, beforehand, and then uh, go enjoy the cigar. Um, it is uh, the Bitolas offered on this. It's going to be uh, an espresso, a media noche, and then a noche. So uh, that'll help you with sizes. It's four and a half by 52 on the espresso. Uh, a little quicker cigar. If you're looking to burn 45 minutes or so, that's a cigar Bitola you definitely want to go to. Uh, if you're looking at something a little bit more in the uh, medium range, an hour, you'll get the five and three quarter by 54. Uh, if you're looking something to burn an hour and 15 minutes, you can go to six and a half by 52. Like I have, uh, re- retrospectively pricing wise, uh, seven 99 for the espresso to eight 99, eight 49, uh, for the, uh, media noche. And then of course the noche that I'm smoking now, eight 59, uh, I'm sorry, nine 59, uh, up to 11 bucks in your area. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, this cigar this cigar features a uh, this cigar features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Um, sorry, guys, <laughs> I'm in my mobile studio here. Uh, uh, a binder is Connecticut Broadleaf uh, filler, Dominican, Honduran, Nicaraguan. So you got the triple play there. Uh, of course, the, nor- uh, the origin of uh, the cigar is Nicaragua Factory Tobacco de uh, Fernandez. So uh, flavor wise, man. Espresso bean very much comes through. Uh, it has a little oily feel to the wrapper, which is not bad at all. Uh, you get a little uh, woody uh, leather aromas, uh, earth and cocoa powder. Um, once I prepared my cigar uh, to light up, um, you know, I took a cold, a good uh, cold draw on it, and I had uh, flavors of chocolate, uh, cocoa. Uh, uh, red pepper so on the retro in, on the retro ex uh retro hell uh hail uh <laughs> uh you definitely get the, the the peppery uh coming through uh very nicely um mm. uh, you get a ton of cedar uh red pepper went up front um uh, woody and spicy as i said sweetness uh uh and a toast uh roasted uh kind of a roasted nuttiness and then uh, 
you start to get a little bit of a mineral uh, as well in there. Uh, yeah. And again, uh, I would slow. say this I is a full those, to, uh, I find those uh, a medium, to be a medium like... to full. What? I'm sorry. Medium to full, Drew? Yeah, medium to full. full. Yep. Uh, and like I said, with the oily, it just comes in very nice. Very nice. Uh, uh, you definitely increase the sweetness, you know, and the sweetness uh, uh, of the coca uh, of the cocoa uh, later on. Uh, but nice. definitely, man, I love this cigar. Yeah. Uh, I'm in love with it. Um, I will fight Chuck Norris all day long for these, and really? I will win. Wow, wow, yeah, <laughs> I found those to be really, really packed. And they burn slow, so when when you're gonna try it, just make sure that you have a little bit more time on your hands. You know what I mean? But it's a, it's a very enjoyable uh, stick for sure. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to retry that one because uh, I don't know if I would quite go myself with fight Chuck Norris, but uh, not now you piqued my interest again. So uh, I will stay tuned for that for sure. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. And the construction, the val. Construction, construction, and value on that—you just can't beat it for one of those cigars that you don't mind keeping in, uh, in a rotation. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, for me, it's just—it's—it's it's been excellent. So yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. I had. Um, hold on. Now I got to switch. <laughs> Where am I? Right. <laughs> I I had the Melenic by Foundation Cigar Company. Um, mm -hmm. this stick used to be available, um, for events. If you bought a box or if you knew the rep or however the shop did it and whatnot, um, there, uh, this is a soft pressed petite Robusto. It's got a pigtail on it. The size is four and a half by 52. It's rolled with a Criollo 99 binder from Nicaragua, Jalapa, Nicaragua. And it's um, got uh, it's got a mix of Nicaraguan tobaccos from Esteli, uh, and it's got a Nicara in an oily wrapper from um, San Andreas, Mexico. It comes in a twelve count box. Like I says, it's got a pigtail on it. Construction on the stick is super awesome. It was named after the first emperor of Ethiopia. It's got a little bit of a kind of, um, you know, uh, who, who has believed to be the uh, son of King Solomon and uh, the Queen of Sheba. So it's got a little bit of history there, got a little bit of heritage when it comes to the name and whatnot. But let me tell you something. This stick does not disappoint. This is going to be available on a limited basis. Uh, I'm assuming that it might go into full production See, foundations can be a little bit of small and and, and, and and how he runs his stuff usually starts with with some of the limited and then it kicks into to, to full production. But if you can get your, your hands on this stick, it's in that $13 price range. It is what it is. But let me tell you something. You get classic Nicaraguan tobacco flavor and you get classic burn. You get that pepper. Retro hail is amazing. I'm not a fan of, of a box press, even if it's a soft box press. I just don't like the way it feels in my hand. However, I am getting past that. Um, but I would give this I would give this a box split with a friend just because of the journey aspect of this. A Stogie Geek listener might have to seek these out if they really wanted to, to, to get into them. I'm sure that they're on limited with some shops and all of that stuff who obviously have to have a certain level of having the Foundation Cigar Company in their regular rotation in the humidor. But um, they are available next door over at the Havana Cigar Club. So if you are a Stogie Geek listener and you want them to ship them to you, uh, you can email me at joehstogiegeeks.com and I can um, get uh, your hands to speak to the right person if you don't want to continue searching or whichever. Or if you want to throw it into search, go for it. But I would give it a box split with a friend um, because, like I said, it comes in a 12-count box. It won't break the bank, and it'll be a good story for you to share with a friend. And that was the Melenic by Foundation Cigar Company. Nice. Your next stick. Yeah, I'm gonna. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to try that out. I'm gonna. I think I got my hands on one of those uh, recently from a, a friend of mine who sent me some stuff. So super I'll definitely cool have stick. To go through it's that. Got a lot of buzz. And, uh, it's got a lot out. of buzz. So you know, um, Foundation Cigar Company is well represented here in the Northeast. So yeah. Nice. What's your next one? Okay. So my next one. Um, so my next one. I'm gonna kick it off to is uh, it's called Blue and Green Grand Robusto. Robusto. Oh. Uh, so a friend of mine sent these to me. I don't have them here in Texas, or at least I, I maybe not here in uh, DFW, Dallas, uh, Fort Worth area. So he sent these to me. Uh, this is a wrapper, Connecticut, a binder, Nicaragua, filler, Nicaragua, uh, uh, Tobacco Ria, Unadas, uh, in, uh, in Honduras. Uh, it is a regular production cigar. It's a Vitola of 6 by 54 Toro. Price point on this one is uh, about 10 to 13 bucks. Just depends on where you're at. Uh, so uh, I went and researched this, and I believe uh, uh, they went through, a, uh, again, another revamp. Uh, uh, it was first introduced in 2018, IPCPR. Gold, uh, golden bands holding a cedar cover in its place now adorn the genuine Connecticut uh, shade wrapper. Uh, the appearance on this uh, simple yet elegant. Uh, the design, uh, you know, uh, in case you guys don't know, so geeks listeners don't know. So my name, Andrew, the bandman Galvan. The reason why I put that as my moniker, the bandman, I really love the bands. When I look at bands, I just look at the artwork. I like to look at the fonts. I just love the the, the you no know, touches that went into the thought behind this cigar, or all cigars. So uh, to me, that just shows you how much pride it was taken uh, by the manufacturer, the thoughts, and things of that nature. So, uh, so uh, this this uh, the wrapper has some um, has some visible vines. Uh, it's almost absent of oil. Uh, so it doesn't always look impressive, but man, it starts off in a positive way. And here we go. So, uh, so uh, this cigar at first, when I lit it, uh, the pepper uh, again, the, the peppery is very, 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 very noticeable. Um, and uh, I think the reason why my buddy sent this to me is because I like I like pepper, <laughs> uh, especially on the retro uh, inhale. Uh, or, uh, so I, I love that. Um, the, uh, the aroma, the, the aroma off the foot, uh, pepper is very noticeable. Uh, there's a sweetness that comes through in more of, a, uh, uh, in a, in a, uh, like a herb. So herb, okay. you get a herb taste coming from there. I could, so, uh, it, the draw is, brings is in like a copious a, amount is, of smoke, but not too dense. Yeah. Yeah, you cut it. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were saying something because I lost you for a second. Uh, uh, but the but but again, uh, the 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 profile in this cigar is 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 it's a medium full. Uh, the flavors you get out of this is uh, at the beginning, like I said, is red pepper. Uh, then you get a little bit of floral. Then you come back on the second third with citrus, and then you get this sweetness of uh, of an herb that comes through. And uh, the smoke time on this cigar was about an hour and 30 minutes. So it was, uh, mm. uh, I paired it with a light roast coffee uh, at the time I was smoking it. I think it was about 11 p.m. And so I was up late doing some work. And uh, I don't know a lot about this cigar, but man, just just wanted to 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 share this with the Stogie Geek listener. Uh, if you have it in your area, man, check it out. Uh, the Retro Hell. Produces a long-lasting aroma of, uh, uh, again, of red pepper, uh, constant floral citrus. The body of the cigar does increase slightly. Uh, the body of the cigar does increase slightly towards the end, uh, with a medium finish. Uh, but uh, on this one, I hear I think I'd, I'd give it a, a try one, and uh, okay. let us know what you think about that. Yeah, yeah. What we'll do is we'll we'll we'll, we'll coordinate a mailing and, and crisscross. Uh, some of the sticks that you you try and some of the sticks yeah. that we recommend and, and all of that stuff there too. So yeah, so you gave it a try one. That's good. Um, I have one quick question on that herbal. It's not like uh, 
like a acid herbal incense thing. What, 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 can you elaborate just a, a little bit more on that herbal? Like, wh where do you think that's coming from? Uh, you know, I, I want to say it was, uh, I want to say between like a, maybe like a basil. I'm not quite sure, but it's just, okay. it's just yeah. right there. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, it wasn't very acidity or anything like that. It was just, it was just something different. And I'm not sure if that's because of the, uh, you know, uh, you know, of the region. I'm not, I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know a lot yeah. about the cigar, but definitely um, make a note for yourself. Yeah, it, it, to uh, put that in uh, mind. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely make a note for yourself yeah. to put that into my yeah. into my, my my swag bag because uh, I'm intrigued by that. Uh, I wonder if it kind of yeah. tastes like uh, the Atabe by United because the Atabe by United cigar company um, has a freshness to it. I don't know if you ever had one. Um, if you yes. didn't, you, you know, you know what I mean. I, it's, just, it's just really tough to describe, and you're like, wow, yeah. like totally different so i love when we come across a blend that's like to uh, totally different and and kind of stumps us a little bit when we're trying to articulate some of the reviews so uh for that alone it's it's standing out for for me right for sure awesome i had the my oh, father definitely. la promesa right which is this i mean mm. the, the rapper is ecuadorian habano oscuro Binder and filler on Nicaraguan. It's obviously done in the My Father factory. Uh, it's available in a Petite 4.5 by 50, a Corona Gorda 5.5 by 49, a Robusta Grand 5.5 by 54, a Toro 6 by 52, and the Lancero 7.5 by 38. The Lancero and the Toro and the Robusta Grand, I had all three blends, so I had three of the five blends. That Lancero is so tasty and so awesome. I mean, my, my father really delivered an awesome stick here. Again, with, with that Oscuro wrapper, it yes. gives it a, a – it's not a, a, a harsher Nicaraguan flavor. It kind of mellows it out a little bit. Um, could be used for I, – I would call it medium. If you're a really beginner, I would get the smaller size for sure. Um, because what, what I noticed is some of the beginner yeah. smokers tend to gravitate towards the bigger stick because they think that it's quote unquote, for a dollar more, you get more tobacco, but sometimes more tobacco might leave it off balance or it might be too, too strong for you. But this cigar, it's available in 20 count boxes. Uh -huh. It's in regular production, totally, totally, um, box split, uh, for sure. And if you get yourself on the Lanceros, mm -hmm. They're box worthy. You got a couple more sticks. Nice, awesome. Oh yeah, I, I love how more. you keep so, notes. I, uh, I love the, I love I the notes. <laughs> yeah. What you got? Yeah, I need a uh, my next vehicle. My next vehicle. Good. I'm gonna make sure it has a teleprompter in the windshield built. I'm in. working uh, well with nice. the, you know story geeks. <laughs> uh, the next one I. <laughs> we got to get a mobile studio. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I was telling Mark earlier, just, just so you know, that I'm going to have to call Jerry Seinfeld and see if I can get a cigars and cars segment, you know, going. And, and do a thing. You know, yeah, right, right. Either that or get a backdrop cars. so no one knows you're in a car. That'd be funny. <laughs> you know, it's all yeah. good. It's all good. I think, it, right. I think it's great. Right, right, you know what right. I mean? I think it's great, but, you know. Yeah. Um, what's you have a couple more sticks? Uh, so here we go. I got I, I got into the. Wrong. Yeah. So I, the next one I got into that I have not uh, smoked in a while. I'm gonna say at least it's been about three to four years. Was a Diamond Crown Julius Caesar cigar. Uh, oh yes. His name after yeah. Julius Caesar, uh, J C Newman, uh, founder of uh, J C Newman Cigar Company. Like all Diamond Pro, uh, Crown. Julius Caesar cigars I produce at uh, Tabacleria Fuente uh, in the Dominican Republic. Uh, the blend uses an Ecuadorian Havana seed wrapper, a Dominican binder, and a Caribbean basin and Central American fillers aged for five years. So uh, this cigar was created to celebrate the 115th anniversary of J.C. Newman cigars 
and the 135th birthday of J.C. Uh, Newman. Uh, the business has been in the the business has been in the same family for over 100 years. Just a little history on that. So I got my hands on a 1895 Perfecto. Uh, again, uh, a Turo uh, or a Fuente type tabacleria uh, wrapper, Cuban Havana uh, binder, uh, Nicaraguan, uh, and then filler, Honduras. Uh, 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 Central American fillers. So uh, mm. I lost my notes here. Uh, so the cigar, the, go, the cigar is something to look at. Definitely, it's got a perfecto shape. I don't really smoke a lot of perfecto shaped cigars. I've seen them. I look at them. They're kind of, they look kind of like they're wrapped up a little tight. So I, I guess I get a little intimidated with that. And so I, I always want a nice, easy draw on something. But this, for being that the way it was shaped and the way it's wrapped. It actually was easy. Uh, uh, the smooth wrapper with no visible seams. Uh, the blue, the light blue of the band really pops against the the, the wrapper, and it's kind of a reddish, darkish, tannish brown, and uh, so it really looks really nice. Again, I like the bands, so I look at the band. I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. So, anyways, first third, uh, a little tight in the beginning, uh, but nothing difficult. Uh, the deep the deep sweet notes uh, mixed in with some cedar. Uh, didn't get any spice, not really anything really to talk about there. Uh, uh, but it was very easy on the retro with some nice floral notes. That I love. And so that right there, I kind of understood the, the complexity of this cigar uh, in that nature uh, for me. Uh, the second third begins uh, again, not, not with too much change. So it doesn't tr transition crazily uh, or over over stating uh, something in the tobacco or the flavor, uh, and it and then just just uh, it kicked in a little bit. So the strength definitely definitely woke up, uh, but still getting the sweetness out of that. Uh, the cedar did started to kind of wind away, uh, and so uh, at that point I was just enjoying the notes. Uh, for the cigar, had it after dinner. I think I waited about 25 minutes and I could not wait anymore because I knew what I had. And so I wanted to really get inside that cigar. Uh, the final third uh, turned into a strong uh, espresso, which I like to drink after dinner. So, but instead of drinking, this cigar came full round and I didn't have to go to my espresso machine and, and make one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that you know, it, it woke me up, but you know what? It, it was just enjoyable. I didn't want the cigar to end at the sweetness had faded out a bit more. Uh, the nuttiness has joined the espresso and man, it finishes out to a nice medium, uh, uh, relaxation and putting you, getting you ready for the evening, you know, getting ready to go to bed. Uh, oh, yeah. so for me, uh, man, uh, this one right here, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely would uh, share this. So it'd be a box split for me. Uh, it's an expensive cigar, <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's enjoyable, definitely. Nice. Can you repeat it again for the listeners so that they don't have to rewind back? The name of it, not the whole review. What's the yeah, name it's of a, it? A diamond. Yeah, a diamond crown. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Julius Caesar. Yeah, it's I a got diamond it. crown. Julius, Julius Caesar. Eight eighteen ninety five, and the one I smoked was a perfecto. Yeah, I was a little distracted when you gave the name because the owner Juan just handed uh -huh. me a Monte Cristo number two <laughs> Cuban, <laughs> and he winked at me and said, yes. "There you go." <laughs> you know what I mean? so, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think uh, the, we're gonna wrap up Story Geeks right now. No, I'm only kidding, right? <laughs> uh, I'm out. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm having a blast over here. But um, um, that so your review was the Julius Caesar, and you gave that a box worthy, right? Box worthy, correct? Yeah, yeah, box, box worthy, worthy box definitely. Uh, uh, but I would box split with a friend of mine. Uh, if they wanted to endeavor that with me. Heck yeah, that's a great smoke. They actually have a lot of those uh, here in South Florida. Julius Caesar, uh, Placencia, uh, a lot of J.C. Newman's here, a lot of, Placencia, super lot of yeah. boutiques down here too. It's so cool, but yeah. Um, I had, I was pleasantly surprised by this. Um, 
This was sent to us by La Gloria Cubana. They always send us a bunch of sticks. They send us a care package uh, here at Stoya Geeks. It's the La Gloria Cubana Spanish Press. Now, um, this Spanish Press cigar, it's named after the techniques where they place the cigar into trays and dividers immediately after rolling. It's placed into boxes, so it's designed so that the cigars keep their shape. Um, it's available in a Robusto, 5.5 by 50. It's available in a Toro, 6.5 by 52. In a Press Gigante, which is a 6 by 60. Uh, they're all available in boxes of 20, so it's available in three sizes. And let me tell you something. This uses a Nicaraguan Jalapa wrapper, a Mexican San Andreas binder with four fillers, Brazilian Maltafina, Dominican uh, with uh, Peloto Cubano, as well as uh, some Nicaraguan uh, fillers. So it's got four different fillers in there. This cigar, I had this in the Robusto in the Toro size. This cigar is completely amazing. And this cigar is like in that $7.50, $8 price range. You can get it online. You can get it at your local retailer if they're really into Gloria Cubana. Awesome stick. Uh, it came out this May, um, and you should definitely seek this stick. I am like all over the stick. Uh, it's it's uh it's it's such it's so tasty. Yeah. It's it's a it's so flavorful. It's not really strong, even though it has some of that Nicaraguan with with the four uh, fillers kind of give it that balance especially with the uh, wrapper yeah. and, and, and the, you know, and, and the Mexican uh, San Andreas binder. But let me tell you something. I would go, I would go box split on this. It's definitely over a fiver. Doesn't break the bank. You're going to enjoy these sticks. You can even qualify these sticks. Like if you're going to a cookout because they're actually smaller uh, within the Robusto size, right? Because that uh, Robusto is only five and a half by 50. Yeah. So when you go to a party and you got 45 minutes because you don't want to take two hours to smoke a stick, maybe you even give one away because it doesn't break the bank. Right. They're not going to be disappointed. Awesome cigar. La, La, La Gloria Cubana Spanish Press. Definitely go out and get them for sure. You have one more and I have ah, one more. Is nice. that correct? That's it. Oh, you're all yeah. done? Yeah, I'm going to choose between the two. I actually got – no, I got two okay. more here. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, Let's... I'm going to choose uh, – I, I don't I don't think we did the CA, uh, CAO uh, Flathead V19. That came out uh, this year with the IPCPR. Uh, yep. The original Flathead debuted back in 2013 using a, using, mm -hmm. a, using a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper over a Nicaraguan binder. Uh, the fillers were uh, Dominican Republic and Nicaraguan, uh, but they 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 developed uh, general uh, cigars. Uh, uh, yeah, general cigars. They they ramped this one up. I mean, they for this version. Uh, oh, yeah. So this one here is a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Uh, uh, the binder was a Connecticut Habano. Uh, the filler Dominican uh, Palado Cubano. Uh, so you just had that in your last cigar, I believe. Yep. Uh, Nicaraguan, uh, Est uh, Estelle Condega, uh, oh. and Jalapa. Uh, yep. I had a five and a half, uh, five by five and a half by fifty, uh, medium full. Uh, price point on this one's about uh, between twelve and fourteen bucks, I guess. Again, just depending on where you're at. Uh, but man, this was a. Uh, I, I've I've tasted a couple of the CAO uh, line. Uh, but this is one that I thought it was worthy to talk about. And it is also, like I said, been revamped. Uh, mm -hmm. And this comes in uh, a camshaft, 5 by 5 by 550 what I had, and then a V19, 6 by 60 uh, It's called a car V19. The one I had is, a, uh, I guess, a camshaft, a V19. Uh, that, there's a lot of – there's a lot of – names here <laughs> a lot of descriptions in the names and it's 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 some it, it's something i'm wading through uh when i'm making my notes but at the same time i want to give our Stoke geeks listener uh as much details as i can so uh dark uh this cigar taste notes uh, here we go uh strong notes of dark cocoa uh floral sweet elements uh uh malt 
luscious creaminess uh smokiness uh one guy even put there like a cafe a latte uh mm. black pepper cedar and some mineral uh barnyard uh for me uh i'm gonna tell you right now the dark cocoa definitely uh a little bit of the floral and as far as the other stuff goes uh the i black pepper and cedar definitely other than that that's what i got out of it in, in my palate uh the cold mm. draw does present a uh, uh a dark chocolate and uh you definitely get the red pepper and the cedar um mm. Uh, I, I, I read this other guy's, uh, one of my buddies sent me something. He was telling me he tasted like black licorice. Uh, so I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so again, just to let you know, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this stick, uh, uh, a well rolled cigar, uh, the, uh, each puff is, is, is very well, uh, uh, received. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it it does it's a little weighty, um, and uh, uh, and I'm glad I smoked the one I smoked because the other one is about a two and a half hour smoke, and there's no way I have time for that right now, or in the sure. last week. <laughs> but uh, but definitely uh, uh, the spiciness, uh, 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 man, it really kicked in, and in the back of my throat when I when I retro hell, man, you can definitely uh, you get you get the peppery. You get the, uh, a little bit of cel- uh, cinnamon element coming through, uh, and, uh, and uh, man, it's just uh, like I said, it's it's a full medium, uh, medium to full. Um, uh, this this stick is absolutely uh, uh, complex, uh, but it's bold, it's beautiful, uh, and it's it just it's just one of those cigars that I think that uh, we all should uh, get into and. Um, I would say on this one right here, I, I would definitely give it a fiber, uh, mm-hmm. just to give it a try, and then from there, uh, you, you 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 know you, uh, you know uh, aging it in, in your humidor for a little bit, and then come back to it and see what 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 uh, what that does for you. So yeah, I'm kind of glad uh, you CAO, mentioned the CAO flathead. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of glad you you mentioned the CAO flathead and you gave it a fiber. I d- I'm not ready to to review it quite yet. Yeah. But I got my hands on C, the CAO session, yeah, and 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 I was like, "Whoa, this is oh yes, different. this is a different cigar." I'm not at the liberty to even give it a review yet because I was like, "I need to smoke this while I'm not working." Because I did smoke it when I was working, and I was like, "Whoa, this is different." I'm enjoying it. I'm getting a bunch of different tastes from it, and and I want to kind of assess it uh, there. But mm-hmm. yeah, CAO. I used to be such a fan of the brand and I really hope that they, they kind of, I don't want to say make a comeback at all. I, I just really hope that, that, that they got their things going now that, you know, the original, the original CEO left and they had a little bit of a, a, a downswing and hopefully that, that they're coming back up now. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeking sure. out some more from, from that yeah. uh, brand. I've always been a, a fan of CAO. Yeah, I'm gonna so tell you that session cigar. I had that as well, and I crazy, agree with you right? on that it's one, man. When I uh, I had that, uh, what was that? No, it's crazy. It's a crazy cigar. Do me a favor for the next episode, three hundred six. Try to have a review for that. I'll do the same, so we can both kind of talk about it on a more um, okay, a, a more prepared basis for sure. You know, comparison, definitely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so this so this CAO Flathead V19 again, uh, just letting you guys know out there, it's uh, 2,350 boxes were produced, boxes of 20 were produced, so that's only 47,000 cigars. So uh, I definitely would get out there and, and try this cigar. I, I I believe it. You'll you'll you will not be disappointed. Uh, and uh, you know it's it's definitely something that. Um, I feel that all the Stoke Geek listeners, uh, if you like this uh, medium to uh, full body cigar, this is one way you can definitely try it out. And um, you know, like, like I said, it's not overpowering, and but at the same time, you'll enjoy all the the flavors that you experience off of your palate on this one. Awesome! Looking forward to 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 
to getting into more of the CAOs for sure. The last stick I want to talk about is the La oh, Polina yeah. Nicaraguan Oscuro. I love this stick. It's salty on my palate. Like, I pick up a big salt component. Love that Oscuro wrapper. So it's salty first to me and then tasty. It's available in the Oscuro Gordo 6x58. Mm-hmm. It's available in the Oscuro Robusto. I had that size, which is 5x52. And then I also had the Oscuro Toro, which is 6x50. In regards to wrapper binder filler, it is an Ecuadorian Oscuro. Wrapper and binder are from Nicaragua. La Polina definitely delivered this stick. This stick. And the Mr. Sam are really like one of my two favorite La Polina sticks for sure. I would give this box worthy all day. It's available in boxes of, 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 of 10. I'm sorry. It's available uh, in boxes of 20. It's in regular production. It doesn't break the bank. You're in that 850 to 950 to, uh, total range. Um, nice. You know, so it's super, it's super good. It's super tasty. And... Uh, definitely uh, something that you want to seek out for sure. Uh, it, that was the La Polina Nicaragua Oscuro. So um, absolutely, it's 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 a great stick there. So um, next week, Drew, we have uh, a interview scheduled, and we're going to be doing some more sticks of the week. So uh, yes. the Stogie Geek Bus is alive and well and continuing, and we're going to oh, yeah. have a huge fourth quarter push. And um, everything's everything's going smooth. Uh, uh, your, your mobile studio is great. I'm sorry that we didn't have the van and the humidor shipped to Texas yeah. and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Next time, right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to have to, when I get home, I'm going to have to steal my wife's rabbit air and stick it in my cabin. Even though I got a nice cabin carbon filter in here. Uh It'll yeah. work it out. It'll, it all works out. Just drive real fast. <laughs> windows down. Do. Yeah, windows down. Yeah, let all my paperwork fly out. That happened to me yeah. four days ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, so, still, yeah. listeners, I want to say thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for uh, coming and, and listening to episode 305. I uh, am here at the Havana Republic Cigar Shop in Fort Lauderdale. Drew is clearly on the road out in Texas getting his work done. I want to thank Juan for his hospitality here. If you ever want to check out a cigar shop here in Fort Lauderdale, I think this is the place that you want to be. Try to come on a Friday and Saturday night. You will not be disappointed. They have an awesome DJ. You can even dance on the sidewalk if you want to. Super cool. You know, it's super cool. I want to thank our producers back home. I will be back in studio and back to work on Monday. And we'll see you next week on Stogie Geeks. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. You guys have a good one. Yep. See you guys next time. Take care. All right, too, buddy. <laughs>